All right, y'all, good morning, good morning. Hopefully you're having a wonderful day whenever you're seeing this. It is, this is my third go, <laughs> and whatever will be will be with this this one. So I'm all set up. I've got my head all spaced. I've got my threading slot hook. I've got my, this is actually a tool. Oh, I guess I should introduce myself. Hi, y'all, I'm Amy McKnight. <laughs> this is day two of me working my way or preparing to work my way through the hand weavers pattern directory if you don't know what i'm talking about then go check out yesterday's videos today i need to get to work and start threading these heddles um i'm gonna be just I, i've tried this video a couple of times and i've run into all little tiny issues so i can't really I'm just gonna go for it this time hopefully you'll be able to follow along as i go so I'm going to be threading my heddles for four shafts, a straight draw, a straight draw, which is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I'm using the threading method that's found in David Zanakis's book, The Zanakis Technique, and I'm threading for 100% density. So I'm going to start out by threading my, I'm going to start out the threading, but I'm going to thread my salvages um, as is explained in Ms. Um, Dixon's book on page 16 and 17. I'm going to try <laughs> to explain that um, because I can't, because this I'm very new to it, but it's a way to achieve an even set in your threading. Now, just a re reminder, this is shaft one, shaft two, shaft three, I'm sorry, sh um, heddle one is shaft one, heddle two, heddle two is shaft three, heddle three is shaft two, and the slots are, the, are your pickup sticks, which are shaft four. I'm going to start out by threading a hole and I'm going to thread the hole in shaft one and I'm going to go back and I'm look, going to look for the corresponding hole in shaft two, but I am going to go to the side of the corresponding hole in shaft two. So I am going to go to the side of the corresponding hole in shaft two and I'm sorry, in shaft three, heddle two shaft three, heddle two, and I'm going to go to the side of the corresponding hole in heddle three, shaft two. Heddle one, maybe tomorrow I'll have these marked. Heddle one, shaft one, heddle two, shaft three, heddle three, shaft two. All righty. Next up, next thread. We're going to be threading for shaft two. So th straight draw is one, two, three, four, which is this pick of six. So we're gonna go over, now we just thread a hole. We need to take this thread, the next thread, and we need to get it all the way back here to shaft two. We're gonna do this by going in the slot beside the hole that we just threaded, because we're passing through shaft one. We're going to go into, in the next slot that corresponds to the hole that's not threaded, but it's beside the slot that was threaded. And then we're going to go into the hole in shaft two that corresponds to the, that's right beside this slot shaft or slot, slot that just has the thread into it, to the left of the slot with the thread that we just put in there. And that threads shaft two. And we're going to go to the next thread. This is the third thread. And we're gonna, I'm using the, just using the, the um, braces threader because my heddles are, this front heddle is too small for my um, heddle hook to pass through. I could go back and forth with it, but it makes more sense to me to just um, use this little threader. Next up, shaft three. We're going to go now, we have, we have in shaft one, or in this first one, two, three threading, we have been in the first hole in the second slot. We're gonna move over to the second slot that's beside this first hole that we threaded, and we're gonna start going to go to three. Uh, I need to 
put this so I can see what I'm doing. I was looking at the wrong one. Yeah. So we're going to go over because the threads are going to run not, so we're not going to go where we just ran shaft two. We're going to go where we ran the, where we're going to go to the next slot over to do shaft three. So we're going to go to the next slot over. I'm going to put that thread through. And then we're going to go into the hole that is to the left of that thread that we just passed, passed for shaft two. And then we're going to go to the slot that is to the left of the thread that we passed for shaft two. And we're going to go to our last thread. Our last thread, which is the shaft four thread, which is a slot thread and it will be on the pickup stick. We're gonna go and follow the thread that we just did, with the, which is shaft three. We're just gonna go straight through. We're gonna go to the left of this whole thread. This is a whole thread, which is shaft three. We're gonna go to the left of that. And then we're gonna join the shaft three thread in heddle three. All right, so that's the first threading. Now we're going to go and the next threading, according to page 16 in Ms. Dixon's book, we're going to double the thread. So we're going to have a double density of threads. So I'm going to pull out two of my groups of three threads. Don't get confused. The reason why I'm using three threads run together is because that's what she used in her book. She used three, two 16 threads together for a single warp. You'll, if you have the book, you'll see that. And on page 16, she doubles, she tells you to double the threads, um, one threading in at the salvage, or at least that's how I understand it. But I'm going to keep going back and rereading and reading and rereading so that I will understand even more. And um, yeah, but that is my current understanding of what I'm supposed to be doing. All right, so we're going to repeat our sequence. We're, we're threading these double threads, which is six threads total or equal to two, you know, warp threads if I was using single threads. And we're gonna take that and we're, we're going through shaft one. And now we're, going, we're not gonna go in here with the shaft four threads. We're gonna move over to the next slot and heddle two, which is shaft three. And I, and I know y'all, it's probably crazy. I'm talking Greek. You're like, what, what, what? But I tell you, I promise you that if you understand this, you will, you'll be golden. It takes a minute to understand it. And even I, I don't, I don't, I have to use this, the paper. Um, but once you do get it, you get it. And it makes a whole lot more sense than the other ways of doing it. Okay, so I'm going, so what I did is I ran the heddle one thread through the hole in, um, I mean the shaft one thread through the hole in heddle one, through a slot in, in heddle two, which is shaft three, and through a slot in heddle three, which is shaft two. Let's do it again. We're going to do the second shaft. We're going to take the thread and we're going to, we're using six total threads if you're, if you're doing it, it like the book because we're doubling this. Now we're gonna go to the slot beside this whole thread that we threaded and we're gonna go into that slot and thread. This is, we're going to shaft two. So here's how you can think about it. We're in, so we just threaded that. We're not going to, we're, we're gonna go beside it. We're working to the left. I'm working to the left. Now I come to shaft heddle two, which is shaft three. I'm not going to thread a hole because, well, that's shaft three holes and I'm working to shaft, I'm trying to get to shaft two. I'm not going to thread a slot with this particular threading because we already got um, shaft two threads and we have shaft one thread here. Wait, 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 did I make a mistake? Sometimes I do. Ah. This was important. 
Oh, no, no. Okay. <laughs> the doubling is throwing me off. Okay, because this is double, this is thicker, and I'm thinking, oh, no, I put two, two in there, but no. We're going to put this shaft two thread right beside or right with these doubled shaft one threads, which are in the slot to the left of the slot that we put the shaft four thread in. And like I said, I'm, I'm doing the salvage thing as a new thing for me. Um, so I'm learning, I'm sharing you, I'm, we're making this airplane in real time. All right, so there's that second threading. So we're on the second sequence and we're using double threads for the second sequence and I am doing this as according to page 16 and 17 in Ann Dixon's book. Just so you know where it's coming from. Because she said that this makes better salvages. So I'm trusting her. <laughs> and that's what I'm doing. All right, so we're on shaft three. So right now we have a doubled whole thread in heddle one, shaft one. We have a doubled slot thread that takes us to shaft two. We're going to go and let's see. Put that there so I can see. Shaft three thread, we're going to come over. So we're not going to go and put this thread in heddle one in the same space that we put the shaft two thread. We're going to move over one slot and we're going to put the thread in. We're going to thread the thread in a slot in heddle one. We're going to go into the next hole in heddle two, which is shaft three, which is what we're working on. And then we're going to go into the slot beside this hole thread in, sh in heddle three, which is shaft two. Last up. <laughs> Shaft four. And then once we get this, we're not going to have to mess with these double threads again until we get to the other end. So now we're going to do our shaft four threads, which are just going to be passed straight through. They're going to be pretty much in the same slots as the shaft three threads. And beside the shaft is in the slot to the left of the of the shaft three, three thread. So this is the shaft three thread. We just thread it. So this shaft four is going to go beside it, go with it, in heddle one. In heddle two, we're going to put it in the slot beside the hole that we just threaded. And in heddle three, we're going to put it with the slot thread that we just threaded. All right. So that is an eight, that's eight threads. I want to do, now how you tie your knots, everyone has their own when with, with doing indirect warping of when they tie their sequences. So I guess I could wait and I probably will just wait and tie my sequence when I have 10 threads, but, um, I could tie it now because this is going to be a pre pretty decent sized little bundle. But I just want to make sure that all my ends are pretty much matched up. So I'm going to give it a little bit of a tug. Make sure everybody's matched up. I'll put that down and do two more threads and I'm going to tie a knot. Eh. Where am I? Am I... Did I finish the sequence? Yes. So I have one double two three four yeah I'm gonna just tie it at the sequence so I'm gonna go ahead and just tie every every two threadings sequences so I don't get confused you can do however you want and I'm gonna tie an overhand knot, but I'm not going to tie it super tight just in case I need to. If, if you make a mistake, you're going to want to, you're going to need to pull it out and um, do it again. All right, so let's go. We're on our next threading sequence and going from here, it should be a little bit faster because we're just going to be going one, two, three, four. So 
I'm not really going to try to explain. I'm just going to thread and tell you what I'm threading. And hopefully by doing this, the repetition will deepen the impression. So I'm going to go through the hole in head of one for one. I'm going to go through the slot in head of two because I'm heading, just doing one, getting to the back. And I'm going to go through this slot also in head of three. Shaft one in this sequence is threaded. Next up, shaft two. Okay, shaft two. We're gonna go. Oh, I made a mistake. Okay, here's where I made a mistake. In heddle one, when you're doing four shaft four. Straight draw threading one two three four one two three four or the ascending order four three two one four three two one. You'll know you didn't mess something up if you have a space between the holes as you're threading. So I'm looking and I saw two ways that I messed up. Messed, I saw that this this slot had threads in there, and if I'm gonna after I thread heddle one. In my my sequence, the next slot when I thread the hole for heddle one for shaft one in heddle one <laughs> in my sequence, the next slot is going to be empty, so I can thread heddle two, the um and heddle three for shaft two. I know y'all, it seems confusing. I I promise you, it get, gets better. But I made a mistake because there's no space between this shaft one thread and the um. And the next one. So there's a space right here. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. There's, you have, you thread shaft one. And because of the, the skipping that you need to do, there's going to be an empty hole. Right here, I didn't skip over. Which means that I would have three threads here. And, and I'm sure it probably could work, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> because I want to visually be able to check myself. Um, in addition to, you know, just triple checking. So we're going to pull this out. No arm, no file. Foul. <coughs> Not COVID. <laughs> Do I need to say that? I'm down here in my basement with my dust bunnies. All right, so I'm going to thread shaft one in the correct hole. <laughs> And now I'm going to go into that empty slot. Empty slot. All right, now we go. We're all good. We're doing what we're supposed to be doing. And now we're going to go and get this, this thread, which is going to shaft two. And we're going to thread this beside the slot that was shaft one. We're going to go with the thread that we just threaded, which is the shaft one thread in the next slot in heddle two. And we're going to thread this through the next avail the, the hole to the left of the thread that we just threaded. That sh that's shaft two is threaded. Let's do shaft three in this new sequence. And we're going to go, we're going to thread our little needle. We're going to skip over and start into an empty slot and go through that empty slot. We're going to go into the next hole to the left of the threads that we threaded in the previous slot. And then we're going to go into the next slot. Shaft three is threaded. Shaft four. <clears throat> going to go and we're just pretty much going to follow the the threads that we just we just did we're going to go into this this slot with that shaft three thread we're going to go in the slot beside the hole that is shaft three and we're going to go into the slot that contains the shaft three thread 
And that's another sequence done. Celebrate, jump up and down. All right, let's go to the next one. We're going to go into the hole. We're going to skip. We're not going to go in this hole. We're not going in that hole. <laughs> We're skipping over to this hole because it's beside the slot that contains our shaft three and our shaft four threads. This is the next sequence. So we're going to go into this hole for shaft one. In the next heddle, we're going to go in the slot that then the next empty slot. And we're going to go into the next empty slot. Next up, we're going to go and do shaft two. We're going to go into the next empty slot in shaft in the heddle one. We're going to join the shaft one thread in the heddle two. And we're going to go into the next hole beside the previous slot thread in heddle three. Shaft two is threaded. Mm -hmm. My alarm telling me that it's 4.30. I got 10 minutes more to do, and then I'll have to come back and finish this up another time. All right, so we're going to keep going. This is shaft. This is the shaft three thread. We're going to move over to the next empty slot in shaft in heddle one. We're going to go to the next hole which is the shaft three hole. And we're going to go to the next empty slot in heddle three. Shaft three is threaded. Shaft four. We're going to go into, let's see if I can do this quickly and actually finish this morning. We're going to go into the, the slot that contained the shaft three thread. We're going to go into the slot beside the shaft three hole, hole thread and we're going to go in with the shaft three thread that we just previously did in shaft two and I think that's two sequences. Watch out y'all. We are making progress. Progress, progress, progress. We're going to mash up our ends. Sometimes if you're really careful and you lay them down in a way they kind of match up. Pull everybody check everybody. So in this particular version of straight draw threading, you can check yourself to make sure that you did it right. If you have every other hole thread in each of your, every other hole in each of your heddles has a thread. So I have every other hole in my shaft one. I have every other hole had contains a thread in shaft two and every other hole contains a thread in shaft three, which is heddle two. So it looks as if I didn't huh, mess this up somehow. All right, I'm going to tie a loose overhand knot, and we're going to go. Actually, I have, it's 4.45. 45, I have a hard stop. <clears throat> and so whether or not I finish it or not, I got to go. Okay, so we're back to um, shaft one. We're going to go. We have two ways to see that we're where we need to go. We can look and we see our pattern. So we know that if we're doing straight draw at 100% threading, we're going to move over and we're going to move over and make sure that there is a hole between that last thread. All right, check. And we're also going to look in our slots and we see that there are threads in that slot. So we need to move over. So we know that we're going to go to the next hole over Beside the, the threads, which are shaft three and four threads, we're going to go into this hole for shaft one. Shaft one, heddle one. And we're going to go through to the next empty slot. And we're going to go through to the next empty slot. Okay. Shaft two, <clears throat> we're going to go to the next empty slot in shaft in heddle one. We're going to go with the 
shaft one thread in the slot and heddle two, which is shaft three. And we're going to go into the next hole after we've skipped a hole in shaft two, which is heddle three. Okay, shaft three. In all honesty, I think that using one of these two things is probably easier than um, using the pedal hook for us. Shaft three. But you use what you feel comfortable with. Hole. Slot. Next. On a side note, when you're doing the indirect warping, one of the things that I didn't do consistently, but I am doing more consistently now, where am I before I start talking? All right, and to figure out where you are, just look at where the farthest thread is, right? So we have, back here we can see that we have a heddle two, we have a shaft two thread, but there's also a thread beside it. So if we come up, we can look and see that shaft three is the last thing that we thread, so we know that we're going to go into, and we're doing shaft four, which is gonna go with that slot thread in heddle one. <coughs> it's gonna go beside, in the slot beside shaft two, I mean shaft three in heddle two. It's gonna go with the shaft three thread in the slot in heddle, th in, in heddle three. I tell y'all, my dear rigid heddle weavers, that in all honesty, when folks say that, you know, oops, don't do that, skip a hole, it takes a lot. Once you understand this, one, you kind of sort of want to keep all your stuff lined up too, it's helpful, so you know where you're supposed to be. Once you understand what you're doing, and you're able to keep, okay, heddle one is shaft one, heddle two is shaft three, heddle three is shaft two, heddle three, heddle two, is, um, and the slots are shaft four. We are really doing more thinking no offense, floor loom weavers and table loom weavers, but we have to think harder <laughs> to do this. So stop telling us junk about how our, 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 our process is like super, super whatever. Because when you master this, you're getting a mental workout, which isn't a bad thing, but yeah. It's a good little bit more than what y'all have to do. So, 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 yes. I'm not going to start talking or get on my soapbox, but even since I posted this, I've had, you know, s someone tell me that I should just get a floor loom. And I know, and I know it was in kindness, it was in love, you know, not wanting to see me, in quotes, stress myself. Because, yeah, maybe there is, a, there is a learning curve. But once you learn the learning curve, and especially if you're not trying to talk to people and do this. Where am I? Just did two, so I'm going to three. Looking at the pattern. The pattern will save you, y'all. Because I'm looking every other one. And this is, um, I'm sorry, I know I'm not finishing thoughts. But I'm going to say this before I forget. I would encourage you when you're learning this method, and that's another reason why I'm weaving through the book in the order, because it allows you to weave a lot of things on the same type of threading, which, you know, you can put on a long warp and just, um, where am I at? Three, four. You can put on a really long warp so you don't have to, rewarp your loom as often, but I would encourage you to put on a moderate, a moderately 
short warp. That being, I think that this warp is around um, 2.5 yards, plus or minus. It's 80 inches. <laughs> so, no, it's not even 2.5 yards. It's two and, two and a third yards. No, I didn't do the math in my head. <laughs> I remembered. All right, so I got two threading sequences. We're, let's check, that, check our work. Everybody is where they're supposed to be. I'm going to tie our little knot and go to the next one. I got five minutes. I'm not going to be able to finish this in five minutes. I'm probably, I hope y'all got the understanding of what I'm doing. I'm probably not going to um, film the entirety but in these last little bit of time that I have before my alarm rings and tells me I have to go do my next thing, <clears throat> let's recap. Slot one, title one, you're always going to be going through the holes for the shaft that you are threading. You're not, you're going to be careful to move over, um, and, and, and you're putting your threads at least for a hundred percent density you're only going to have two of your your thread grouping or, or threads per slot so if you got three threads in a thread that has multiple threads in the slot then you did something wrong i'm sorry somebody's gotta be <laughs> straight with you you did something wrong and and that's okay that's why this is something that if you're if you you probably don't want to be talking when you're doing it when i first started doing this i just would like turn i didn't listen to music i didn't listen to talking and i'm a person who usually has something going all the time it was silence <laughs> i tried to do it at a time when my family wasn't going to ask me for anything i just was like I, I gotta I gotta have my full attention to knowing what I'm doing so that I don't jack it up because <clears throat> it is it takes some concentration but once you have done it a few times it takes less and less concentration it's kind of like driving right you know, when you first learn to drive, you're like really paying attention. You don't really want people talking to you. You don't want, you know, too much happening. You just want to be able to drive. And you're like that for a little while. And you're able to get from A to B. Um, and then after you've been driving for a while, you know, you can turn the radio on maybe. You might want to turn it, you probably turn it on before you start your journey as opposed to trying to mess with the dials as you're driving because you still need that full concentration, which is important because we don't want anybody to wreck their car. And then as you get more proficient at driving, you get to the point where it's okay, you know? Maybe that's not for everybody, but maybe that's what's for me. You can do more. And you don't get as confused. It's easy. <clears throat> for something like this, I think it's important that you remind yourself of those things that nothing, this doesn't happen overnight. I didn't get this overnight. I, I didn't begin to understand this overnight. It took me some time. And I'm still learning. Because... To be honest with you, my, <clears throat> my enjoyment comes in weaving plain weave. I like plain weave. I like simple plain weave um, cloth. You know? The wonkier. I don't go out of my way, honestly, to make my stuff super crazy. But neither do I go out of my way to weave cloth as one color. I do, I do like to do like multiple stripes. I like seeing multiple stripes. Where am I? We are in 
Haha, did I? Where did I? What do we do? Haha, ha. okay. Talking to you. So, I didn't thread shaft two. But I was able to catch myself because I'm like, something doesn't look right. And you'll be able to see it as you as you do this more. My point was, I think I made my point. It's easier to do this if you don't have any dis distractions. And I'm sure it's like that for even floor loom weaving. You know, if you don't have people telling you things, you you may you may not make mistakes. There we go. All right, y'all. My alarm's about to go off, telling me that I need to go <clears throat> in a bit. So this is the last. I'm gonna do this last sequence. How many do I have? Yep, this is my last sequence. And then I'm going. Uh oh, where am I going? What is happening with my cross? Grab somebody that I didn't wasn't supposed to. Okay. All right. Okay, y'all. Well, so then I don't have to unceremoniously go. I want to bid you adieu and say that you can do this. You can. Ha ha! I made two mistakes. I skipped the slot. Now, it's not the end of the world, but I'm going to fix it because I just am. When I was threading shaft two, I skipped the slot. So I didn't go in the slot directly beside the hole in shaft one. And so I'm going to pull that out. My alarm didn't go off. I have to check into that. I do got to go, though. Put it in the thread and you'll see these things and you know you do want to as far as you can be um, as far as you can you want to do your best let me go This is three. Okay, I said two. One. How are they crossed like that? Oh my goodness, I was having some time. Okay, let's fix that. <laughs> oh wow. Okay, I totally crossed my thread. Okay, that didn't belong there. Okay, so this belongs. This belongs over here. This is shaft one. I'm going to fix this and I need to go. All right. So I crossed my threads and I would, I wouldn't, if I, if I didn't have it in a pattern, I wouldn't have noticed it, but because I do, I did, which is a good thing. And this is why you don't talk when you do this. Okay. I've got a couple of threads that I need to fix. So this is shaft one. This is going to be shaft two. This one needs to go over. Oh my goodness. What did I do? Mm. Yeah, I'll go where I didn't want to see. So that's four. And that's three, four. And this is one. Four. 
trying to figure out where I made a mistake. Okay, so you reach three threads. Okay. This is three, four. So that's three, four. This is um, two. This is one. So here's what, this is important. What do you do when you make a mistake? You trace all your threads. So this is shaft one, found it. This is shaft two, it's going to the right place, yep. This is shaft three, it's going to the right place. This is shaft four, which have to have been the last sequence. All right, it's going, so this, these are, these are all right. Let's do the next one. This is shaft one. And it's going to the side. That's probably where I made a mistake. I threw the wrong one on shaft three. It's shaft one. And it's going to go there. And this is my mistake. There's my alarm. I'm going to fix this. All right, so this this thread I thread it in I threaded sh shaft two threads and shaft three as I was talking as I was telling you I made the mistake I didn't do this on purpose <laughs> ah but it's good this is a learning experience and this is quick and I'm not cutting this yes I'm leaving it all right so shaft one is here this is shaft two which needs to go with shaft one. And then it needs to go back here with shaft two. Yay. And this is shaft three, which is going to come over and be in the slot, the next empty slot. The next hole in our pattern. And the next empty slot back here. And let's do that before. And then we're going to be done for the day. Whew, that was some stuff. All right, y'all. This is shaft four, and this is our last <sighs> threading sequence. See? Don't talk. <laughs> And do this because uh, it's easier for you to make a mistake. All right, y'all. There we go. We have another another sequence threaded. Again, I'm not going to um, shoot the video. Wait to do the rest of this because I need to be able to focus because I got other stuff to do. I am officially seven minutes late to my next. Thing that I need to do. I can't do that every morning. So I'm going to finish this threading up when, when you see me next, which may be um, tomorrow, but it may be in a couple of days after I've gotten the, the, the loom, um, the heddles threaded and put on my loom, um, we'll be weaving. But hopefully this video has helped you to be able to understand the concept. If you haven't already, go ahead and get a copy of uh, Mr. Zanikas book, The Zanikas Technique. You don't have to have the hand weavers pattern directory. Um, this will help you, you know, if I'm going to be working through it, but you don't need to have it. But um, if you do have it, you'll be able to follow along with what I'm doing and you'll be able to do several things on the straight draw threading. Most important takeaways from this video is just take your time. Don't talk <laughs> while you're doing it. And, um, you know, try to be consistent and try to be, um, be, you know, take your time and be, kind of particular about doing it right because doing it right allows you to see when you've made errors and it's better to fix the error before you get too far down the threading than it is then to catch the error you know after you've gotten this whole thing on the loom that really is a pain um so anyway that's it for this video if you're not already subscribed why aren't you to subscribe 
um, rate this video, um, give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment. I'll try to answer as many as I can. Best way to get support from me would be to join my community the next time it opens. I promise I'll open the doors soon. And there are packages for everyone. Alrighty. Plans, that is. Plans for everyone. Alrighty, y'all. That's all. Gotta go. Need to go exercise. Talk to you later. Bye.